Southern California, yeah. Born and raised our DNA, laugh and cry to what we say, we hit you with that wordplay. 4053. What episode are we on? D, they feeling like they be zombies, all dressed in Abercrombie. SoCal DNA coming in live, 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night. COVID got you sitting inside, why not sip one and free your mind? Cheap thrills, popping pills, stat cash, spend it fast. Listen to all of those lies as art and act like you surprised. surprised. Surprise, surprise, I'ma hit you with that freestyle flow, uh, I'm not really rhyming to the beat, but let's go. You know, I pack my lyrics up like tacos, they're ready to go, ready to show, you D, what's up? So I'ma pass on the buck to you, and let me see what you got in the tuck. I'm not, I'm not gonna, no. No, I'm no, just gonna you, go ahead. You fucking I'm pussy, not. you fucking pussy. I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. You know, hey, I'm not slippery enough, all right? So, so you know, much respect to you. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you hanging. That's on me. Damn, man. That's on me. for right. a bar. Not even a bar. You know, no, I well, maybe bar? As, as we progress, I have a bottle with me right here. Uh, let's see how deep I can get, you know, how much of a dent I can make. Mm-hmm. Um, But... You know, dude, hey, Happy New Year to you, man. Cheers to you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all of the audience members, all 10 or 11 of them on YouTube. Uh, oh, and, uh, we're double digits? <laughs> we were double digits then, my friend. <laughs> and and uh, all, uh, you know, sporadic <laughs> three to five or, or, or it's 11 at times on Spotify. But, you know, I, I know for a fact people are listening. I'm, I'm getting positive feedback. But it's always nice. more like, hey, you have a new episode. Wow. And I'm like, yes, we do have a new episode. And people tend to ask the same question. You know, where have you guys been? You know, back in the day, it used to be like almost every week. But now it's like lucky to get one every few months. So, you know, part of our collective SoCal DNA, New Year's resolution, is to bring you the content that your heart desires more frequently on a more consistent basis, starting... With what better day than January 1, day 1 of 2022? This is the D and the A bringing you the live fire, the live heat, the vocals, the lyrics, everything that you want, things that make you laugh, things that make you cry. I'm basically giving you the elevator pitch right now for the SoCal DNA podcast, and we're going to bring that to you every single, let's say month, let's say month. (laughs) I'm not going to... Every payday, every payday. Oh, I think uh, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Let's but say it's, month. it's a promising stretch. Oh, okay, okay. You know, let's say I get paid once a month. Let's just let's just keep it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, with, with the new year. Oh, did my? By the way, can you still hear me? Okay, Dom. You are. You're doing fantastic. Okay, okay. Because here's the thing. It's something that I I don't really know how to use, even though I'm an engineer. You know, a lot of these microphones. Uh, and these like headsets, right? They have an inline button that you can press to like connect to a call or maybe skip a track, right? I never use it for that purpose. It's just kind of there. And so sometimes when you're, you know, brushing your hair aside or whatever, you may accidentally hit that button. And then you're like, uh oh, am I muted? Uh, did I go to the next call? Did I skip the track? Has that ever happened to you, Don, when you have those kind of inline mics, you know, where you. Have oh, man. No, no, unfortunately not, dude. See, I, I don't have, I haven't had long hair in a long time. And if I had long hair, it mm-hmm. was up in a man bun or just kind of, uh, what, what do you call it? Side parted? I think it's the right term. Just parted. Right term. Parted means just hairs parted? to the side, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So parted. So I never really had that issue of like accidentally brushing up uh, on that inline receiver. I, I have a feeling you're just saying that, you know, because you accidentally or quote unquote accidentally hang up on people. <laughs> I think you're just trying to get this down on some sort of recorded uh uh what's the right word? Oh my god, I'm I'm buzzing after just one draft. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> as Don tries to recover his vocabulary, which is limited to 2022 begin with. starting strong. <laughs> <laughs> starting real strong for sure. But, you know, I I guess for me, it's not so much the the microphone part of it. It's just time to time I feel like I'm too, you know, stuck to the past when it comes to audio what do i mean by that what do i mean i mean of course don you'd agree uh not not just just stuck in the past in general (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) it's it's a type of uh sickness that i have that i have to deal with but you know what what i'm talking about is you know at my work uh when i talk to friends and probably you as well don 
everybody has Bluetooth headsets. Friends? Everybody has. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Let me get my shit off. Let me get my shit off. So everybody has Bluetooth headsets or some kind of like true wireless earbuds and whatnot. And that seems to be all the rage. Like I see people w- walking up and down the street, you know, talking to their colleagues, their friends, their family, their loved ones, mm-hmm. whatever, with those Apple headsets and you know, the Samsung buds, whatever. I'm still rocking the wired headphones, man. Like, the ones that don't need to be charged, the ones that you can plug in to your 3.5 millimeter audio jack and just, you know, pump out that bass, the in-ear ones. The Mm. brand that I rock with, by the way, is Skull Candy. If you guys can find... (laughs) You're still on your Skull Candy? I'm still on my Skull Candies, man. And I'm telling you, it's got to be the discontinued Inked (laughs) 2.0, all right? It's so it, limited. It's limited now. It, it's very limited, and and I gotta pay top dollar to get it off eBay nowadays, man. Before I was rocking like maybe like three for ten, right? You buy it from China, you wait a few months, you get it, totally fine. It may not even be Skull Candy. It's a Skull Candied or something like that, but that's fine. I rock with it anyways. But now, just to get one pair, it's like fifteen dollars for a pair. I I did shell it out a couple of months back. I haven't opened it yet. It's more like a backup in case both Jesus. both the left and the right monitors just go out <laughs> for my existing bear. But that that's kind of my problem. I, I have to eventually graduate from the wired audio generation to the wireless one. Um, uh. fr- friends have tried. I, I've you know I've received a pair of the. Uh, have you heard of M Pow M P O W? It's no, um. It's one of those like generic Chinese brands that you know create all kinds of like audio equipment and headsets and whatnot. On Amazon, they were selling these uh, you know wireless Bluetooth um, headsets for like fifteen dollars. So my friend got me one because you know I just kept telling people, yeah, I don't have one, I don't have one, but I don't even use it. It's like I see the technology right there, I see the improvement, what? I see the advancement in front of me, but I choose to regress to this wired so- state. Yeah. So not even a friend's gift would push you over the edge to make the jump? You know why? I think, personally, for me, it's more about the law of conservation of energy. And you might be like, what the fuck? Why yeah, is what the fuck, off- engineer? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. Why- it's more like this. If I can conserve the amount of energy that I use, right, that's mm. better for me. I feel like, overall, mentally, that's better for me. Why burn up so much energy with wireless headsets that need recharging from time to time when I can just carry around a a perfectly good wired headset? I just plug it in. It doesn't even need external power. It never needs charging. Always good to go. And I'm perfectly fine. You know, I'm not burning. Yeah. It is using power, though, but just from a different source. That being the phone, I'm assuming, from what you're using to play music, though. Well, either the and phone is, or the laptop, but the point is a 3.5 millimeter jack is barely supplying any power, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking, like, well, isn't there some sort of, like, you know, evolution in regards to how energy is utilized? It's where I would expect in more recent tech, it would be more efficient compared to old tech. In, in general, in general, what you're saying is is uh, true, right? Whenever you have improvements in technology, and this is getting a little bit esoteric for some, but whenever you have improvements in, let's say, the process for you know manufacturing integrated circuits, the technology node decreases over time. So maybe 10, 15 years ago, the shortest you know nanometer length of a technology node was like what. Uh, 50 nanometer 60 nanometer something like that now it's down to like less than seven less than six nanometer so your microchips your your uh you know intel uh processors or your you know amd whatever they can now have like billions of transistors in one small location um and with that comes lower and lower power consumption so you're right as the technology improves, technology kind of shrinks down, so you don't need quite as much power. Yeah, it gets uh, more efficient. Exactly. Efficiency improves. But in this case, it's really a twofold problem, right? Number one, what I'm talking about is the having the need to recharge. I think it's frustrating when I already have one thing that's in my pocket, the phone, 
that needs recharging. And, and by the way, my phone is super old at this point. It's more than five years old. It's a Samsung Galaxy Note 5. And mm. although I like it, it has a stylus and everything built in. As you know, phones age pretty quickly. And the battery capacity is stuck at like 60, 65%. So I'm burning through this really, really quickly throughout the day. I have to recharge at least two or three times. Ideally, nice. I'd have it connected all the time. So for me, in my mind, I'm already sick of charging my phone. Why on earth would I want to charge something else? You know yeah, what I mean? That, that sounds like a that's a personal problem. You just haven't been upgraded. So you're stuck <laughs> with the yes, issue. Yes, you're you're yes. constantly you you forced yourself into this situation I have. without even giving the uh, opportunity out there of upgrading. And uh, you know, for all our ten friends listening, we all know not to buy him a phone because he'll likely not use it. He doesn't he doesn't use gifts. You know, he, he's stuck in his ways. So everybody listening, don't buy him a new phone. That's right. That's what right. And phones are expensive, so really, please don't oh, buy him yeah. a new phone. Don't waste your money on buying. Oh, you don't want it. I think Nokia is making a comeback. I think we can get you like a flip phone. You know, my 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 first cell phone, which was really just an emergency cell phone, back in like uh, probably late middle early high school, was a Nokia mm. brick phone. Um, Hell yeah! It was heavy. It was almost a pound. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, it was like the kind of like the green LCD screen, right? Um, yep, yep. You know, it, but it was solid, dude. Like it, it, you could you could never lose it because it's so damn heavy, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, just just built like a rock. And I'm glad to hear Nokia is making a comeback. Uh, but you know, I haven't really been looking into phones too much. From what I hear, Apple is still top dog, so Nokia has a long way to go to reach Apple. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. And what do you think it's going to take for Apple to no longer be the top dog? Oh, that takes time. I I think, you know, one misconception that I had a long time ago was that, you know, the big companies in our time would always stay big and always stay relevant. And uh, we could easily transition that over to sports leagues, too. But a lot of people told me that, you know, if you really study it over time, companies that could be absolutely huge, like, let's say, IBM, back in the day now all of a sudden people don't even know about them the younger generation barely knows what ibm was um so for apple to eventually lose its significance and its relevancy um it would take i would say anywhere from like 10 to 15 years minimum i don't see it happening faster than that what would it take maybe a series of scandals (laughs) scandals <laughs> that's yeah that's what i was gonna say it's a series of unfortunate events so that's right let me sneak it up in here that's right <laughs> but it, even even beyond that like you got to think of the market share obviously apple's still the top dog samsung is close behind if samsung's next phone or for example the flip phone not the flip the fold right the galaxy yeah, z z fold or some shit like that yeah <laughs> whatever whatever gundam wing it's on right now <laughs> i don't fucking know but yeah like if if that were not just to be a gimmick and really take off then i could imagine apple trying really hard to catch up but because samsung has all the patents and they're kind of you know moving forward with it quicker then maybe that's the apple killer um but at the same sure. time the problem with apple you know, falling off that quickly is that they're not just into phones, as you know. Um, they have a lot of other things going on, and I, I hear they're now exploring electric vehicles too. Uh, did you hear about this? Like, they don't want to be in Tesla's world. They want to have somebody drive an Apple vehicle where it's all synced up to iTunes and you know Apple AirPlay or CarPlay, whatever it's called. So you know, whenever you talk about taking down a behemoth like an Apple or an Alphabet. Um, or a Google, whatever, it just takes time, dude, and it takes a series of unfortunate events or constantly losing market share to a competitor. But what do you think, man? Do you think Apple is here to stay forever, or will there come a time when Apple is no more? Well, you know, um, I'm trying to come up with a very smart answer, but nothing's coming to mind where, you know, with, like, civilizations in general there's always one that rules and then ultimately it falls uh, whether it be burned down internally or externally and I think the same is true when it comes to business so I was trying to think of past companies that have been super relevant uh, mm-hmm. but have now kind of dwindled in scale right like your General Electrics your Fords mm-hmm. your uh, Circuit City. Macy's yeah right yeah Radio Shacks <laughs> shit like that right sure. 
Um, but it's 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 hard when you're trying to speak of it and it's still present because their integration into our life has become so symbiotic. You know, like everyone now, when we were in high school, you know, to jog back to your Nokia brick combo. I didn't think that, that was something that I always had to have on me. Like you said, it was for emergency purposes or mm -hmm. maybe to play Snake when I'm waiting for my parents to oh, pick hell me up yeah. or something like that. You know. Right? Yeah. Um, but it's not to the level of what it is today where, you know, we have a supercomputer in our pocket and we could do everything and anything we kind of need to, more or less, just using it. So I'm, I'm wondering if... You know, this is the launch into where we become, you know, cybernetic when tech and Apple it will remain the kind of platform that we use to move forward with it or, you know, whatever. Who knows? But ultimately, I think, yeah, Apple will eventually be overrun, like you said, with a, a series of unfortunate events. It always happens. Mm -hmm. Happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. And someone will... You know, take over and run with it. <clears throat> you know, maybe the right person to challenge Apple Ooh. is uh, none other. Elon Musk. Well, close. Very close to Elon <laughs> Musk. Uh, maybe it's none other than Keanu Reeves. Ooh. And I bring that up because as you, <laughs> as you, as you guys <laughs> may be aware, uh, um... a, week, a week and a half ago or so, maybe a week ago, uh, the fourth installment in the matrix franchise was released and uh, ah. this one was interesting to say the least um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i first want to get the d's impression of the film because i think he saw it a little ah. bit more recently than i did so well, that's go, true go ahead that's and uh, just from a high level what did you think uh i thought they should have stopped at the first one at the um, first one the first one would have been enough I think yes. Okay, I get two and three kind of rounded. Well, three was garbage. In why, my opinion. Wait, why was three? Let's let's really get into this. I'm, right, I'm interested. Why right, was right. three garbage? Because okay, well, I've okay, seen no, all we, four. We, yeah, I've seen all four. We don't we don't need to talk about two and three because those are garbage and I don't even remember. Oh, you to me, <laughs> I I enjoy it when a story is presented and they don't try to flesh out every single detail of what happens. I like people to introduce a thought and then for people to take that thought whichever which way they want i think that what what they did in number one it opened up ideas of what the matrix is and how you know uh, what is it a different way of me rather a different meaning of life can exist right two and three were just built off of that premise where it, it was trying to showcase what neo was doing to battle it or somehow change it do you disagree well i i think the first one of course is the one that's most beloved by all and i understand your opinion about that uh from what i recall back in the day yes the reaction for number two and three especially number three wasn't very positive um <laughs> it got know. exponentially worse <laughs> as, <laughs> as it went on so you know i understand where you're coming from but i think it depends on how you frame things as well i think to me what two and three did well was get into the lore and and the world building of which the I get. matrix right which i get which, which which i get but then to me that's why i said or saying like just introduce the idea that's what i care about if i wanted a full flesh story i would go to marvel because they are the masters of it or other storytellers based off of fiction rather than this kind of uh, existential groundbreaking thought that is kind of you know playing with emotions don't flush it out for me just leave it there and let people on reddit and 4chan like mind fuck each other that's what i'm into but don't you think they did that for a few years? Matrix came out in 1999, so people yeah. were doing that for like three, four years. And then, okay. of course, Hollywood comes through, right? They want to milk the cash cow, 
So they create sure. two movies in the same year. Do you remember that? Yeah. In 2003, yeah. they, they launched two Matrix films. And yeah. uh, it, I, I think, sure, maybe you lose some of the charm, some of the mystique. Maybe. You definitely do. You lose some of the mystique and charm. There we go. <laughs> but I, th- I still think the movies two and three, if you watch them more recently, maybe you'd appreciate them more. It, it kind of it was kind of cool. Like they they tried some new things with it. They introduced new characters, um, and, and some of them even came back in the fourth installment. But I take it from your reaction, the fourth was worse than the second and third. Is, is that your impression? Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Really? Wow. Wow. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's it's worse. I would just say it's in the same lane as them. It's one of those. I mean, did it even do a fan service? No, I don't think so. I think it just pissed off fans even more. Why do you think uh, it pissed off fans? Because I'm kind of curious about that. I, I have a different opinion, obviously, but why do you think well, it pissed off fans? What did they want? Like, why must there always be a happy ending? Sorry, uh, the spoiler alert, whatever bullshit. Uh, we'll start getting into the details of it. Why must everything have a conclusion? I, I actually think, well, it's for two reasons. Number one... <clears throat> The Matrix, to me, <clears throat> seems like it's relaunching, right? As a franchise, it was extremely popular around the millennium, right? Well, the the fourth ep- installment is the last installment. That's what people have said. That's not what I've read. Maybe we've, we've read from ah, different sources. You so seem so to... the Matrix is fucking with us. See, it's one of those weird things. <laughs> well, um, what are those effects <laughs> called? You see them on Instagram where it's like uh, Mandela Effect? So you see one thing, I see something else. The Mandela effect is, is kind of like, uh, I'll give you an example. Remember the um, the children's show slash book, uh, The Berenstein Bears? Yeah. So the Mandela effect is everybody remembers Berenstein spelled with uh, S-T-E-I-N at the end. But really, it's S-T-A-I-N. That's the correct pronunciation and spelling, Berenstein Bears. But you kind of just repeat something over and over again until people forget what the real truth is. So yes, yeah, I think that's that's what uh, pe- you've been reading. Man, Matrix is good. The Matrix is good. The oh Matrix no 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 no! I no no actually I've been reading the quite the opposite. I've been reading everything that you've been reading in the sense that Matrix has been lambasted. It's been absolutely criticized to death, and people hate it. All the top reviews are against it. It's gotten very very poor reviews globally. Mm-hmm. Um, but me personally, I I kind of liked it because. They decided to take a new position on the Matrix, right? Of course, you have to bring back your stars, like Keanu Reeves reprising his role as Neo, the one. And, of course, uh, his love interest, who he ultimately has a happy ending with, as Don alluded to. Morpheus. <laughs> Besides him, Carrie Ann oh. Moss, Trinity. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, you got to have those two A list, or not really A list anymore uh, for Carrie Ann Moss's sake, but, you know, those two big stars from the Matrix trilogy, you got to have them back. It's a shame. One of the complaints that I had was it's a shame that Lawrence Fishburne wasn't asked to come back. Uh, they couldn't afford him. That's probably why. Maybe, maybe. I mean, he is on Blackish now. He's, uh, you know, doing some other things as well. He's, he's yeah. very much. Um, more well known at this point of his career than yeah. maybe he was back in 1999 to 2003. And but, also in the story, um, at least in Matrix Four's timing, he would have been a little too old, I think. Yeah, um, they they took some creative licensing there. Um, they did pay <laughs> homage to him, if you remember when they were on the planet uh, IO, I think it's called. You know, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, she reprises her character Niobe and she kind of shows yeah. Neo, hey, you know, fortunately, original Morpheus passed away. Spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Uh, but here's a statue in his honor. And the statue the statue had his likeness. The statue had Lawrence Fishburne's likeness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, go, going back to it a little bit, I liked what they did in terms of rebooting the franchise, but not really, right? They didn't really reboot it. It is a continuation. It's a it's a non traditional sequel, and the way that they did it was kind of cool to me because you know in 1999, what the Matrix represented was like people would have these usernames or you know like a login ID that they would go by when they're online, but in their real lives they're nothing like their online persona. It's like you have an online profile and then you have your real life persona and people were just kind of getting into the internet. You remember back then 
things like uh, Netscape Navigator was the browser. Um, uh, they had like AOL Instant Messenger, you know, where you have chat rooms and you have your own login. AOL was actually big. Remember America Online? Like people would actually yep. have to pay for that, which was ridiculous mm-hmm. when you think about it. So people were just discovering the internet. It was very much new. And <clears throat> the Matrix at the time was revolutionary. Now, you can't really have those same concepts because although I think the Matrix has aged well, you know, dialing into a phone booth to go in and out of the Matrix doesn't quite, you know, have the same feeling uh, in the current generation. People nowadays don't really know what a phone booth is, so why would they believe in that story? That just feels like antiquated instead of futuristic. So the fact that they... they made all these changes to how people come in and out of the matrix um matrix within the matrix almost like an inception thing right how there's a modal which is like a little you know simulated matrix within the whole matrix program that has its own programs inside like a a new morpheus and a new trinity and all that i thought it was innovative and it's not exactly maybe what you're looking for in a sequel but what they did well was kind of rebuild the matrix franchise and and bring more eyes to it again a lot of haters as well sure but in my opinion i think this is the start of a new frontier for the matrix i don't know how quickly the next film or next films will come it kind of depends on the director uh lana wachowski but yeah but you definitely expect uh when they do release if they do release another one that another one would soon follow thereafter right well i think it's better to do it the right way um (laughs) i i think you know having more of a gap between films is not a bad idea yeah traditional gap maybe at least a year or two at least a year or two i mean i i don't want the matrix to become fast and furious where whoa 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 greatest franchise ever I, I like Fast and Furious, don't get me wrong. The point I'm trying yeah, to make yeah. is, Fast and Furious, they fell into a little bit of a Hollywood trap, which is often true for very good franchises. After the first few were big, big time blockbuster hits and everybody was talking about the tuning scene and the car subculture and everybody was tuning up their Honda Civics to go like over 110, <laughs> 120 miles per hour with the VTEC, um, I think eventually they changed the franchise into focusing more about the heist, uh, the global espionage, and these Avengers-style crews coming together to do something kind of crazy, and less so on the cars. I haven't even seen the last one. and I'm It's one amazing. The, You're missing out. I, I want to see it. It's on my queue. It's definitely on my high priority queue. Oh, God. Queue. Oh, no, it's, it's the high priority queue. <laughs> no, high priority no. queue. It's still low. your queue, nonetheless. <laughs> it's still my queue. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You're, you're right about that. But, but I guess what I'm saying is Fast and Furious eventually, for lack of a better word, devolved into a uh, yearly or every two years type of occurrence. And, and that and, is exactly why I love it. They do not shy away from what they are they we all know they are a money making franchise that is all about one word a family and yes. yes what more can you want than a family cars and more action i can care less about the story at this point it is so ridiculous uh, what these normal quote unquote normal people can do with the power of their <laughs> with their uh what is it gas powered vehicle it'll be interesting because now with the advent of or the acceptance of electric vehicles and uh electric supercars i think it's just opened up even more for the franchise to build off of even though they say there's only maybe two or three left till they complete it you know uh did you hear uh, there's some beef going on between Dwayne johnson and vin diesel about what so apparently for a while now um they both have like like these bad reputations on set uh i guess the rock was kind of deemed to be a prima donna and kind of uh, wanting to do things his way and showing up when he wants to show up that kind of thing and vin diesel because he's kind of the guy for fast and furious he's like the other alpha in the room and they were always butting heads and apparently um 
The Rock and Vin Diesel, they had a private conversation, one that was not broadcasted on Twitter or any social media, where The Rock was very clear to say, I will never come back to this franchise again. And after that private conversation was had, uh, Vin Diesel on social media, you know, being the social manipulator that he is at times, he basically <laughs> tries to say, oh, come on, Rock, let's let's just say it's water under the bridge. Let's, uh, you know, come back, uh, come back to the family, that kind of thing. And mm. I thought that was interesting because I guess people tend to side with one or the other. Um, I feel like, if anything, I would sign with The Rock. I mean, for more than one reason, not just because How of his... How dare you? You would side with Vin How Diesel? How dare you? You would side with Vin Diesel on this one? Oh, what do you mean? I, I would side with, uh, what is it, XXX any day. All Triple right? X. Guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I kind of get it. I mean, I, I would... For the sake of the franchise, I think Vin Diesel is more important. But I understand that The Rock is going to bring in the ticket sales. He is, I don't know if he is still to this day, but he is the highest grossing like, male actor in the world right now. I believe it, was, it, yeah. Like It was probably a move on the agent or the directors or whoever the hell is running the show for Fast, the Fast and Furious series. He's like, Vin Diesel, what the fuck, dude? Like We need him in order to get you what you want to get paid yeah yes you know like if you want it you gotta suck it up for the next two movies mm -hmm. you'll still be the main guy but we need his name on the docket mm -hmm. to bring in those ticket sales that's right fuck your ego like they're doing it for the money come on you really think this is all about family it's fucking like <laughs> 10 movies in seriously bro <laughs> you know <laughs> it's about another f word the finances that's really what it's about no i mean to me i i appreciated the last the movie i saw from the fast and furious franchise with the rock in there do you remember it was the spin-off with jason statham yes exactly Hobbs yeah. and Shaw. Mm -hmm. i thought that was enjoyable you know and and the yeah. rock really had a chance to shine because he was one of the leads and i don't think vin yep. diesel was even in there so to me, Fast and Furious is a big enough franchise where technically you could create more of these spin-offs featuring The Rock and it would still yeah. make them a lot of money. But mm -hmm, ultimately mm -hmm. for the most money to be had, you have to have both of the stars in the same movie. Yeah. No, yeah. 100%. 100%. And this is like what something I wanted to mention. Sorry if this is blowing you off track, but why the fuck does Neo always have to talk in that stupid tone that he always has? Hi, my like, name is Thomas yeah. Anderson, and <laughs> like, I play the, the Neo in The Matrix, and I still know Kung yeah, Fu. Dude. He's like a little retarded, a little slow, but like somehow in pain at the same time. He's strained. And... <laughs> I think every time, yeah, to be honest with you, uh, when, I, when I started uh, Matrix 4, it, it was a little bit a while before I... I you know saw the other films or, sure. or after i saw the other films and so when i was listening to him talk i was like wait is that has how he always he... been like that yeah has he always been like that and so i had to like rewatch some clips and i was like oh kind of he kind yeah, of had yeah. that but even more so now like it's more oh, pronounced yeah. now than before yeah. and and i i watched an interview um of both keanu reeves and carrie ann moss i think it might have been by wired or one of those you know tech magazines and i think keanu reeves genuinely just talks like that in pauses and he's you know this is kind of getting into something else but a lot of people always have a very positive impression of keanu reeves you know about this like he's, oh yes no i've heard about that he's he's, he's a stand-up guy yes um yes. from all that i've read i wish him nothing but the best uh, yes. All that he does because he wishes the same for everybody else. Exactly. He does not use fandom in his favor. In actuality, he is almost a fan to everybody um, with what he does for everyday people. It's it's amazing that someone with such clout does that. Uh, I, it's very rare. And I'm hoping all of this stuff that I've read is true about him. Because that type of person mm -hmm. comes, what, maybe one in a million, if you're lucky, right? There's mm -hmm. Between me and the A, it's one, and it's me, obviously. That's the <laughs> yeah, of course, one. of course. You know? Uh, I'm, so. I'm basically the, uh, the, the second-rate Morpheus. You know, I did, <laughs> I'm not quite as good as the first one, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do some things. I'll do some kung fu. What did you think of Morpheus, by the way, in this film? Did you like him? I thought it was, I thought it was nice. Um... Spoiler again, right? Uh, we've already pretty much fucked it up. Yeah, just, uh, but just the way don't that even they worry, displayed yeah, him, 
Yeah. They, they split them as kind of like a software that is able to materialize. Um, that that I thought was a very new concept, which played into the whole modal thing. Yes. Uh, which I which I found to be entertaining. How about um, how about Don? For those of us who don't know, why don't you explain what a modal is? Well, to me, a modal is honestly it is like like almost like a how do I say it? The way I thought of it, it is a particular plane that you can access on a on the in the matrix that is specific to it that plane. I don't know if that makes sense. It's mm. it's it's kind of like a. I, I kind of equated it to how what's going on in the Marvel universe right now, where there's like multiverses, mm. uh, where it's just specific places or timelines or planes, just specific instances. I think is the right word mm. that exist in con- at the same time as other things going on. What's the easiest way to phrase that? I don't. I don't fucking know. No, I mean, I, I think you, you got 90% of it. I, I think what I would add is, like, I might have alluded to this before, it's almost mm-hmm. a, a mini matrix within the matrix. So Yeah, that, that's why I say plane, right? Because it's like a slice, but it's mm-hmm. it's 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 still 3D and full enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I'm not a fucking quantum... What is it? Quantum mechan... You know, one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I think modal is more of, like, a computer science type of term type of definition but yeah well that's why i said plane i was like i don't know what i don't know the terminology used by you stemmies weird (laughs) stemmies (laughs) it's it's kicking dude hey woodford reserve shout out to woodford reserve woodford man where's that from is that is that texas kentucky oh no it's fucking kentucky Kentucky Kentucky, bourbon (laughs) that's the only place i get my bourbon from i like it i like it and by the way shout out to all the people in kentucky i know they're recovering right now um, oh, dude, have you heard about Colorado? Sorry, not to not to diss or <laughs> take away time. Yeah, yeah, like what? The <laughs> <fuck>? <laughs> like, like who does that? Wait, let's pause. Let's actually examine what Don just did because I thought that was hilarious. Here I am put trying the to put cap pay- on Kentucky, so I'm like, all right, let's put another fucking cap somewhere else. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, Colorado is also burning in our hearts as well and minds. I, 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 you know, can't imagine the devastation that all these people have to experience and go through and during the holidays too man i mean that's the worst time um they're always going to remember this time that they lost their homes that the fire just engulfed all these buildings and it's definitely horrible over there and yeah hopefully they had insurance hopefully everything's taken care of and absolutely uh may not be in their plan but at least in my book you know i hope and pray that things turn out well at the end of the day absolutely yeah absolutely now uh, jumping back a little bit into the matrix a little bit here yes i i want to ask you one thing what did you think of uh neil patrick harris's character um yeah so i didn't really know what to make of it he was the analyst right that's right. the right term that's right and to me the analyst is in charge of like i i kind of take him to be like the architect of the whole thing is that the right term you think for, well like the controller the mm. the manipulator like the the coder i don't know what the right term but yeah you, you get what i'm trying to say actually yeah you bring up a good good uh word here you say architect of course people might remember from the first films mm-hmm. right the first trilogy there was a physical embodiment of the architect that neo eventually yeah. met right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the architect kind of explained the matrix was created by him and also the oracle oracle mm-hmm being the uh i forget the the actress that played her there were two actresses actually right it was uh what is it was it cleo right miss cleo <laughs> was it no was it no was it, it well, was she, she she certainly <laughs> had that vibe she certainly had that vibe yeah like, say it you're like oh shit was it <laughs> no, oh there yeah. we go mandela effect <laughs> not exactly <laughs> that, that's just the man d effect man that's like the d effect that's all that is that's all it is oh but... that was good that's cool dude. that that's going on the snap uh, the well, snapshot things you gotta, you gotta put yes that on the... yes it's going on the snapshot <laughs> things absolutely um so in a way the analyst is kind of like the new oracle slash architect but definitely yeah, leaning yeah. to the negative side he's he's kind sure. of a villain for sure um yes. but what would you say his purpose was what was the role of the analyst um so the role of the analyst in my opinion uh, in 
really paying attention to the movie, all two and a half hours of it, um, and not drinking through it, by the way, uh, was to kind of, what's the right word, kind of contain Neo, mm. try to keep uh, keep his levels low enough that he remained controllable and kind of pacified, I think is the right word. He mm. was the one that kept Neo in check and constantly prescribed him the blue pills that ultimately led or eased the <clears throat> the strength Neo had within him. Um, I think for whatever reason, Neo is still Neo, the one. And there was no way of really controlling him. So they had the architect or the architect, the analyst, mm. had to do it um, and take on that psychologist role in order to do it. One other thing I'll mention, uh, one of the analyst's responsibilities was to keep Neo kind of close to Trinity, but not exactly close, you know what I mean? Mm. Because he mm -hmm. explained this in his little soliloquy, right. that in order to harvest the most energy out of Neo and uh, Trinity's bodies, right? Because they have mm. them up in those cells. Uh, yeah, they yeah. had to kind of keep them relatively close to each other, almost like strangers that keep passing by, but never really interact, never really touch or anything. And, and I thought that whole dynamic was very interesting. It, it took the movie into a direction that it didn't expect, you know, especially with those scenes in the coffee shop, right? Um, you know, where Neo... Sure was not really himself um and carrie ann moss was not really or trinity was not really herself you know here's one you know old programmer right just kind of a savant programmer who created the matrix video game talking to this lady who's a married mom right she's a mom of like two kids and and yet it's almost like they know each other from a past life and this concept was very cool to me where even though they're in this matrix simulation again, right? They broke through one time many years ago, but now they're stuck again. They still kind of recognize each other. And it's that kind of dynamism that contributes to both the matrix with the uh, energy that's coming off of their bodies, right? In, in the real time, the real environment, in the machine city. But at the same time, it's like that is the crux of the film. It's about this connection between Neo and Trinity to the point where I actually don't think Neo was ever the one. I think there was always two. It's almost like the SoCal DNA where you have the yin and the yang, you have the D and the A. One by itself is not that compelling. Or maybe sometimes it is, depending on who you're talking to. But when you have both the D and the A together in one room, or in one podcast room, I should say, audio room, audio chat, then suddenly magic happens. Suddenly you have... 10 people listening <laughs> Suddenly, there we go yeah, you have a, a very <laughs> modest audience that's willing to put up with some of these jokes and, and other things and i think that kind of you know core of the film is really what i appreciated um because yeah you can always say oh here's this uh you know shining armor like knight in shining armor figure that is going to solve all the problems but now you're saying oh no neo was only effective because of trinity like, together, they're stronger than they are individually. And Trinity was the one, if you remember, she was flying at the end. She actually carried Neo with her. So, to me, it seems like this new direction that they're going to is not just about Neo being the one and saving everything. It's about both of them maybe creating a new Matrix and introducing, hopefully, new characters and, you know, bringing it to a new direction that's palatable for both older audiences like us and the new generation of fans. So that's my two cents. Overall, I'd give it like a 8 out of 10. You know, solid, solid score. What would you give it, Don? I'd give it a solid 5. Damn! Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only way I think they could turn this around is if they do continue to um, build off of this world, this Matrix world they've created, and mm -hmm. uh, somehow Neo and Trinity become the antagonists that's something i'd probably be interested in seeing right well, because if they are if they go off if we riff off of what you were kind of suggesting 
possibility of them possibly creating their own matrix, of course there would probably be people that are like, why the fuck do we have to listen to you just because you created it? And that's something I'd be interested in. And then definitely seeing Vin Diesel come in with his uh, Dodge and really fucking shit up because, you know, it's definitely better to be in a car than in the Biker Boys gang that Neo and Trinity are in. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be really compelling to see, I think. Do you think Vin Diesel is a better actor than Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not at all. They're both bad. <laughs> They're both bad. <laughs> They're both, like you put them in the same bucket as Neo or as fucking Neon, you know, and you're like, fuck, like I don't know what to do. <laughs> one has the power of family, you know. One has a fucking uh, wrestler, uh, and then the other one is just straight up the one. Like I don't, I don't know who to win or who would win in that battle. Depends yeah, the, they're, or not. they're all kind of like characters right like their real life personas are all characters which is kind of interesting <laughs> um maybe maybe that's what hollywood needs in 2022 a movie featuring all three uh but with uh, that it, be- would, it would shatter records that's what it would be all sorts of records that's for sure but you know I, i'd watch it I, I don't even care what the oh, plot 100%. is I, i'd definitely watch it, it. It, wouldn't even, it would pass your cue straight to the front right that's right that's right and s- speaking of things that have been in my queue for some time, and I know Dawn is frustrated by this one as well. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Cowboy Bebop. People who have been following this podcast for greater part of a year now, which is crazy to think, um, wow. know that we started this a long time ago, and the idea was, all right, Art of War didn't work out, so we're going to switch it up. <laughs> we're going to go to Cowboy Bebop and really finish it all the way through. I, I would like to say that we have made tremendous progress. We are about two-thirds of the way done. Um, we only have a handful of episodes left. Um, I think, Don, I don't know if you finished or you're you're planning on just binge-watching the last five or six we have. Um, sure. But I think let's take it drip by drip. Let's go drop at a time, and let's start off with uh, My Funny Valentine, which, of course is episode number 15 in Cowboy Bebop. And and before we talk about it like that, I think we should also play the theme song that comes after. So let me go ahead and pause for a little bit as we play the song. Are we doomed to a cold and heartless future in which computer says yes or computer says no? with the grim finality of an emperor in the arena. Mm, There we go. So, My Funny Valentine is, of course, a very Faye Valentine-centric episode. Unlike the one before, which was mostly about the connection between this chess master and Ed. So, Faye, we barely know anything about her, right? Going into this episode, we know that she's kind of running away from a lot of her past, Um, She has many debts accumulated over time, uh, presumably because she ran with the wrong people, maybe screwed them over. And now she's rolling with the Bebop crew because, quite frankly, that's the only family she has, as Vin Diesel would say. So this episode delves into her past a little bit, and we realize that Faye Valentine is not exactly the young woman that we thought she was she's in fact about what would you say like 60 70 years old because she was cryogenically frozen back when the technology was still new and very experimental i don't know exactly why she was chosen for that it seems like she was involved in some kind of a bad wreck a bad accident a traffic one perhaps and the doctors at the hospital just kind of admitted her and said all right this is the only way for her to survive and then 50 60 years later she wakes up and she has no idea who she is. Um, she wakes up at this hospital, and then some dude keeps checking up on her and talks to her, and he seems trustworthy. He seems like a good guy at the time. And Faye kind of bonds with him, uh, so to speak. And ultimately, you know, Faye and this dude, they, they try to run away together or run away from the debt collectors. But then they get into a car accident. Um, and I think Faye kind of runs away. And then 
the guy with his wreck of a car just keeps going and then I guess the car just explodes and Faye imagines oh okay so he died he sacrificed himself for me but then later on she realizes wait a second all of his debts now go on to me how is that fair and of course her debt to the uh, to the sciences to the hospital for keeping her body cryogenically frozen for so long far surmounts whatever this guy had for his debt but still that was kind of interesting how you know the debts were combined together and so then later on you know in the modern day with the bebop crew this dude you know that once talked to Faye, that once was close to Faye and was part of her past to some extent returns heavily out of shape and he becomes like and he looked pretty good to me he looks solid. I mean, for for de- depending on the standard that you're using, depending on the oh, standard you know, you're using, you know, you know, early 2022 standard. So what I'm using. That's right. That's right. He was fit. Let's let's be honest. There he was we fit. go. Yeah, yeah. his goal body right there. Built different. <laughs> Built different. <laughs> so you know, this dude, uh, he gets arrested essentially, but then Faye recognizes him, recognizes him, and and she's like, you know what? Nah, I'm not gonna let the cops take you here. Uh, we're gonna go someplace or whatever. We're gonna you know get some answers. And then I, I, the rest of it is very very hazy for me because I haven't seen the episode in like a month. But at the end, I think she tries to escape and she runs into the doctor and the nurse that she originally saw when she was um, awakened from the cryogenic sleep. And they don't really give her any answers, but I, I guess they just run away as well. And... I, what, do you remember what happened at the end? I forget what the conclusion was. I, I feel like it's one of those episodes where it, it all kind of goes back to normal. Like, Spike kind of overhears all this, and Spike learns a little bit more about Faye, but ultimately, they're still broke, and they're still the Bebop crew. What did you yeah, get from and, it? Yeah, I know? mean, the, the main thing also at the end was, um, uh, I think, something that you kind of missed, because you really focused on Faye. Yeah. But at the very, very end, it shows uh, Jet, where he actually confesses about the bounty. Um, the, he gives Faye the third of the bounty, which comes out to about 20k wulongs, mm. which is small. You know, and Faye, of course, knowing her and her wulongs is like, what the fuck, this is so small. But then in the little side, you know, in the camera, without telling her, Jet says, we actually added a zero at the end oh. already. So to me, it spoke even more levels. It showed Faye a little bit more gave her a little more depth of character even though the depth is pretty much nothing mm. right given what the story is it's like oh she's has no memory of what she is she's just a scientific experiment that kind of went wrong right uh it showcases that these guys in the bebop are still taking care of her they still care enough to try to make ends meet and complete the story of what you know she is try to help her figure out what she's probably seeking and which is who she is as a person, mm. which I feel that all three of them are doing. Um, they they realize that in Faye. Faye's trying to realize who she is. Uh, obviously, Spike is trying to figure out something that we, I'm sure, will figure out in the future mm. what it's about. Mm. And Jet is, I, of course, obviously, like the, the old wise dude that still seems to have many holes in his... <clears throat> Or many flaws that he's trying to mend uh, that we have yet to see uh, complete yet. So, I don't know, man. I think overall the episode was good. I think it, it pushed things forward. I wish it was more eventful, mm-hmm. um, as many other episodes were. And typically in the anime series, when you get to around this point, it begins to slow down. So I kind of expected it, but didn't want it to happen for one of the greats that Cowboy Bebop is. Mm. It'll be interesting, though, as they start ramping up towards that uh, final conclusion. You know, I want to, like an orchestra, you, you can now begin to see the rumble mm. take effect if you've been following anime. Uh, you just don't know where it's going to come from. You know, what section is going to highlight the rest of this uh, series? I don't know yet. Uh, but hopefully, well, at least what this episode tells me, Faye mm-hmm. is not as big of a character as I probably summed her up to be. And it really makes me excited to see what happens with Spike in the future now. Yeah, um, and I think at this point now, we've had at least one episode for each of the major characters that delves into their past a little bit, right? With Jet, we saw his past relationship that didn't go well. 
him returning to that city i think it was ganymede or something um and handling business there spike of course being the central figure in all this we have seen him time and time again having flashbacks uh dealing with his past both in his memory and also face to face against vicious and now finally Faye, we learn a little bit more about who she is and the fact is she is uh kind of as you put it maybe she's not that important but i think that makes her more dangerous that makes her more of a x factor i i don't know what happens in the future i'm only speculating here but i feel like because we know that Faye's past is shrouded in mystery and even she doesn't know who she is maybe it makes her more willing to sacrifice herself for some mission or for you know the bebop crew or specifically for spike later on i i wonder if they do something like that where because she's kind of a girl with no history almost a girl with no name like Faye valentine may not even be a real name right i i, I wonder if that makes her more likely to give herself to a cause just just nah, a thought <laughs> nah, nah spike's like 20 years old he don't give a fuck about we're, we're, we're straight we're good <laughs> perhaps that that could be the case that could be the case um but you know i, I think with episode 16 or 15 rather <laughs> in the books uh we will find out soon what happens next and uh this is a good start i i think it, at this rate maybe we'll finish up the season i mean it, it, we've been we've been unfrozen from our cryogenic sleep ah. of 2021 I think 2022 brings a lot more promising freestyles uh, from our buddy A, who's going to, you know, basically hit lead all the time. And possibly the D may sprinkle in a little something. <laughs> sprinkle just a little, a little, a little slippery something in there. You know, we'll how, see about, what how about we start right now? How about we start right no, now? No, no, no. Ready? No, no, ready? No. ready? Ready? Far too early in the year. Far too early. In the year. <laughs> but um, you're sipping on one. You're, you're uh, slippery. You know what? No, I mean, I'm stuck in a moldal and I can't. So I'm I'm not feeling ah, too strong right now. You know, okay. I took too many blue pills. Too many blue pills. You know, the, the effects are lingering into 2022. Uh, and I don't want to overdose on the red pill yet, right? Uh, mm. You got you to gotta keep putting down those blues while our boy Blue is still in office. So okay. you got to keep going. Okay. Okay, let's go, Brandon. Let's go. <laughs> hey, that was a, I thought that was a pretty good spoken word right there. Come on, that's something. That was good. I, I, I like what you did there. Um, you definitely hit on all the different topics we covered today. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, for all the true believers out there, uh, take the red pill. Take the risk. It's a new year. It's time for new adventures. Time for new stories from the D and the A. And, of course, more Cowboy Bebop, more basketball talk, more good music reviews coming your way as well and until next time this has been another production of the socal dna podcast and we wish everybody a very happy new year take care catch on the flippity flip